Welcome to Settle 3D version 4, tutorial 13. In this tutorial, we will be modeling non-horizontal soil strata and multiple water levels using multiple boreholes. To begin, if you have not already done so, run Settle 3D. We will begin by modifying the project settings. Open the project settings dialog from the toolbar. In the general tab, set the stress units to metric, stress as kilopascals, and settlement units to millimeters. Select the Soil Profiles tab. In Settle 3D version 4, you have the option of both horizontal soil layers and non-horizontal soil layers. Select non-horizontal layers for this tutorial. Set the surface interpolation method to inverse distance. Select the Groundwater tab and click on the Groundwater Analysis checkbox. Change the method to Grid. Now, click OK to close the dialog. To assign soil properties, select the Define Soil Properties icon. For each of the first three materials, turn on Immediate Settlement. Change the primary consolidation material type to Linear. Enter data for the first three material types as follows. Turn on Immediate Settlement for the fourth material type. Set the primary consolidation soil type to nonlinear. Enter data as follows. Once finished, click OK. For this tutorial, we will specify four boreholes. Select the Add Borehole icon. Insert three layers below. Set the first layer to sand fill with a thickness of 3. Set the second to silty sand with a thickness of 5. Set the third to dense silty sand with a thickness of 10 and set the fourth to silty clay with a thickness of 12. Keep the first borehole location at coordinate 00. zero. Select the Add Borehole icon to add three boreholes. Set their locations and thicknesses as follows. Click OK once completed. Double click on the 3D view to maximize it, then zoom in and rotate the model to view the soil strata. Double-click again to minimize it, then right-click and select Reset View. We will now add our loads to the model. Select the Add Circular Load icon. Keep the default settings and click OK. Specify the location by entering the coordinates 20, 15, then Enter. To add the Field Point Grid, select the Add Field Point Grid icon. Keep the default settings and click OK. Specify the first point by entering coordinates negative 5, negative 5, and the second point with coordinates 40, 30. As we are completing a groundwater analysis, we will need to define a groundwater grid. From the groundwater menu, select Edit Groundwater Grids. Select Import Borehole Locations. For the first point, set the depth to 5 meters, 3 meters for the second, 2 meters for the third, and 1 meter for the fourth. Click OK. Again from the Groundwater menu, select Soil Groundwater Properties. Select the Show Only Use Properties checkbox. Click on Sand Fill, then select Default Grid from the Grid to Use menu. Click on Apply to All, then click OK. The water surface and groundwater grid are now viewable. You can turn the water surface and groundwater grid displays on and off using their corresponding checkboxes. There are several display options available. In the Depth and Soil layer section, enter the location coordinates 5-5. Notice the change in the soil column with input location. Ensure that the field point grid checkbox is selected. Click on the Draw Materials on All Queries checkbox. Click and drag the field point grid. Notice how the materials display change with depth. Query planes can be placed in the X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z directions, as well as the option to place three-point planes. Under Query, Query Plane, select XY Plane. Place the plane approximately under the load. This concludes the multiple boreholes tutorial. Click here for more details or here for more tutorials.